for an authentic looking and functionally robust addition to your next cosplay project, real leather straps are hard to beat. Stick around and I'll show you a couple of basic tips on making your own leather straps for your next build. Hey, greetings there fellow makers. Welcome down to my shop. I'm Bill and today I'm gonna show you some quick and easy ways to make some legit and real leather straps for your costume projects. Now, whenever possible, I like to use the real thing for my costume projects, especially some cool fantasy armor. It can be a tad bit more expensive than using something like vinyl or pleather, but it's a lot more functional. I mean, that's what they used for real armor back in the day, and it's hard to beat that authentic look. So, where does one go to get leather working supplies and tools? Believe it or not, there are still many, many leatherworking suppliers around the country and world. We have a place here in Seattle that I love called McPherson's Leather. But if you don't have a local mom and pop shop, then look for Tandy Leather. They have uh, dozens and dozens of locations all around the US and a handful of locations internationally. And of course, you can buy all the supplies you need online. Once you're inside one of these magical wonderlands of making goodness, you will be awash with all of the incredible materials and tools and knowledge that they can supply. The staff at McPherson's has always been awesome to help me out with any questions I have. In a leather working shop, you will find things like tons of leather, obviously, but you can also pick through a scrap bin for a cheaper alternative. This is great if you just need to make a couple of small things like some short straps. They usually have pre-made belt blanks, which are long pieces that are great for obviously belts or really long straps. You can also find all kinds of thread and cords for your stitching. Plus many, many tools. So many incredible leatherworking tools. I usually end up buying at least one new tool every time I visit McPherson's Leather. There's also a ton of paints. Those are those wonderful Angelus paints that we like so much, even for foam work. And of course, leather dyes. They usually have a sample piece of leather so that you can color match dyes to your particular project. And one of my favorite things to browse is all of the amazing metal hardware. This is where you'll find things like rivets, a staple for most every project, and other wonderful bits like snaps and buckles. Now leather and tools do tend to be expensive, but the hardware and dyes are fairly cheap. So if you spend your money wisely, buy some of that scrap leather, you can actually get started leather working for a reasonable budget. All right, now that we have our tools and supplies, let's get started making our straps. Start by picking out the buckle that you're gonna need for your strap. These come in a variety of styles, so attaching your leather to the buckle might vary a little bit from this tutorial, but the concepts are all the same. When you have your buckles picked out, you can then measure how thick the straps need to be to fit inside that buckle. That measurement can then be transferred to your piece of leather using an awl. In this case, we're using a veg tan leather, and I also like the see-through rulers for this type of measurement. Then, using a metal ruler and a sharp knife, you can cut your strap making sure it's well long enough for your purposes. If you have many straps to cut, it's worth investing in a strap cutting tool. Simply set the tool to your desired thickness and then lock it down. Then run your leather through the tool along the blade, quickly cutting consistently thick straps in no time flat. For strapping a piece of costume armor to yourself, you're gonna need to cut two strips of leather. Once you have the strap lengths all cut out, then you can cut the ends to whatever shape you'd like. In this case, I cut one end to a point. For the buckle holes on one of the straps, I use a handy dandy see-through ruler again, and I poked hole locations down the middle of the strap at regular lengths. These are the locations for punching my holes. There are several types of leather hole punches. I like the rotary hole punch, especially if I need to do many holes, which I usually do. Simply rotate to your desired hole diameter and punch it through each of your markings. Another alternative is a more manual hole punch set. This also has several diameters, but uses a hammer to force the punch through the leather. This tool is remarkably handy for punching through thick leather or more than one layer at a time. Just be sure to put a hard surface below the punch, something you don't care about, like a scrap of wood. For the buckle side of the strap, you'll need to cut a slot. Start by folding over the end of your leather to figure out how much will be needed to cover the buckle. Then mark the beginning and the end of your slot. If you have a slot cutting hole punch, you can use that to punch one long hole. Otherwise, you can use your normal hole punch to add a hole to either end of the slot. Then use a metal ruler and a sharp knife to carefully connect the two holes. When you remove the material 
material from the inside, you'll have a slot that fits your buckle. The next step is burnishing. This will round over the sharp edges on your straps. You can bevel the edges of your leather with an edge beveling tool, but I don't have one, so I use the sanding drum on my rotary tool. To burnish your leather, you need to start by wetting down the edges with a damp sponge. Then you can run your burnishing tool up and down the length of the edge, forcing the damp fibers of the leather back in on themselves, creating a nice, rounded, smooth finish. You can also get beveling tool bits that use a rotary tool or a power drill that make everything go much quicker. Next is dyeing. Start by gently wetting down the surface of your leather and then applying your leather dye. It's best to cover the surface in nice smooth strokes to avoid having some spots that get more pigment than others. Missing a spot and then going back over it can yield less than desirable results. With the dye applied, you can buff the surface a bit with a piece of paper towel and then let it dry. Now is the time to attach your buckle permanently. Slide the buckle onto your strap, making sure it's facing in the correct orientation. Then apply a little bit of your favorite contact cement to the back of the strap in the two spots that will be stuck together. Let the glue dry for five to 10 minutes and then you can squish those two spots together, adhering the strap closed around the buckle. And for good measure, the buckle can also be secured with a rivet. First, punch a hole behind the buckle where you want the rivet to be placed. These rivets come in pairs with a cap and a stem. Place the stem through the punched hole and then put the cap on the stem through the other side. Using absolutely no mercy, smash the rivet with a hammer against a hard surface. The two rivet halves get merged together, pinching the leather together in the middle. And that completes the two parts of your strap. Now they can be buckled together just like a real belt. Finally, your leather straps can be attached to your costume armor. If you're using foam floor mats, be sure to sand off the texture on the inside of your armor so that your glue has a good place to stick. Then brush more of that contact cement on both the foam surface and the end of your straps. The glue, by the way, goes on the top side of the leather. Once the glue has dried enough for the shine to go away, you can press the leather into the foam and the two will bond permanently. Now you can buckle your armor together and it is ready to be worn. So using real leather to make the straps for your costume can be done very easily and for a fair price. Of course, it looks amazing too and is super durable and functional. So I hope you consider using it for your next project. I highly recommend you find your nearest leather working supplier, go get some tools and materials and start experimenting. Hey gang, thanks so much for checking out our video. I hope you learned something new that you can apply to your next project to take it to a higher level. And hey, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That would mean a lot to me. And also you don't wanna miss all of the cool prop and costume making content we have coming out. We have new videos every single week. If you have questions about what we covered in today's video, feel free to list them down below in the comments. I try and get back to everyone over there. And of course, all the tools and materials that we use today will be linked down below. Those are Amazon affiliate links, by the way. So thanks for using those to make your purchases. Everything else prop and costume related can be found over at our website, punishprops.com. Thank you again so much for hanging out with us today and we will see you all in the next build. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any of our new weekly prop and costume tutorial videos. For more goodies, head over to our website where you'll find blueprints, tutorial books, articles, and more. We also have a second channel for our Q&A show and extra behind the scenes videos. Thanks again and happy crafting.